Hey, aloha and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining me for today's podcast. My name is Paul Fletcher and this is The Healing Source. We are halfway into the Ten Da series. For those of you that have just arrived, I encourage you to subscribe to the podcast so that you can catch up on all of the amazing wisdom and teachings that you have missed. In this particular series, we're now in series number seven, we're doing the 10 Da's. The 10 Da are the 10 greatest qualities. They include the greatest love, the greatest forgiveness, the greatest compassion, the greatest light. Those are the four we've accomplished so far. The greatest humility as well. We did the five. And now today we're doing six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Well, we're doing number six anyway, which is the greatest harmony. I'm very excited for the opportunity to share this one. It's one of my favorites. So what is the greatest harmony? Well, as one of the 10 Da's, the greatest harmony is about harmonizing all aspects of life. When three work in harmony, you can cut gold. That is the statement that has been given to us by the one who's brought this wisdom to humanity, Dr. and Master Ji Gong Sha. And Dr. and Master Sha, when he received these 10 qualities, he said, these will be the qualities that assist humanity to transform from their negativity to positivity. The more they bring these thoughts of the love, forgiveness, compassion, light, humility, harmony, and then the following ones, flourishing, gratitude, uh, service, enlightenment. As we... Um, ingrain these in our thoughts, words, and actions, the natural side effect will be the equalization of humanity, the balancing of all that is imbalanced, the bringing more of the yin nature, the nourishing and nurturing nature to the excessive yang nature that is currently in humanity today. So today is Dahashe, spelled D-A-H-E-X-I-E. This is Mandarin Chinese, and it translates to the greatest harmony. Now, some of you may not be overly familiar with uh, Dr. and Master Sha. One of the great qualities that he brings is the message of love, peace, and harmony. Well over 20 years ago, he received a song in his consciousness, and he started singing it out. And it's called the Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony. And since then, it has been translated into over 40 languages around the world. I bring it up in combination with this wisdom today because love, the first of the ten da's, peace, which is not one of the ten da qualities, but is a natural side effect of applying them, and harmony, which is the sixth of the ten da qualities. When we harmonize, our own inner thoughts. We start to harmonize not only our external environment, but the way we bring ourselves to our external environment. Harmony is an inside job. It's very important to understand that as we start to apply these and qualities to our life, becoming more loving, loving ourselves more, becoming more forgiving, forgiving ourselves more, becoming more compassionate, being more compassionate towards ourselves, becoming more light, radiating more light, being the light that we radiate. And then the fifth quality, humility, last week's wisdom and teachings, being more human, uh, having more humility within yourself assists you to be of the greatest service. And so today, you know, harmony starts from within. How do we harmonize our thoughts, our words, our actions? We do that by being conscientious of them. Harmony is something that is a natural side effect of consciousness. When we 
uh, speak words that we know are not appropriate, that we know reflect an imbalanced emotion. We might interject them towards somebody. We have to recognize that we are not only uh, negatively impacting them, we are impacting ourselves. And by the release of a negative word towards another, whether it's on paper or whether it's verbal, you create a quantum entanglement between you and that other person. You create a dis harmony between you and that other person. And this is the beginning of uh, breaking apart the harmonic nature that we want in our lives. <clears throat> what precedes our words is our thoughts. And there's something that precedes our thoughts as well, which is our beliefs. So our thoughts are predicated upon our beliefs. So if we want to change our thoughts, words, and actions, we want to connect to what is the belief that caused me to have that thought, that caused me to have the speak those words, that caused those words to create an action that I might not enjoy. If you're wanting more harmony in your life and a relationship, what is your belief about that relationship? What are your thoughts about that relationship? How are those thoughts activated in words? Are those harmful words that you and this other person are sharing with each other? And what are the actions that you're offering as a result of those words? You have to go back to the beliefs to create harmony in your life. Uh, you can apply it to money as well. Are you inharmonious with your financial conditions? Uh, that's the external representation, the end result. What words do you say out loud about your finances and your harmonious imbalances with your, with your money? Uh, do you say things that are representative of not enough. Um, I can't get ahead. Do you constantly bring yourself into an environment that validates that? Okay. Um, what are your thoughts around it? Do you, are you always in a fear or a worry-based series of thoughts around money and finances? These all create disharmony in your external environment, but it starts based on your beliefs. So if you want to bring harmony into your life and then you want that harmony to be expressed externally and you want to see external harmony, it starts from within and it starts by challenging your beliefs around whatever it is that is showing up as disharmony in your environment. This is an important uh, understanding. Most of us, have difficulties in certain parts of our life could be family could be health okay it could be finances it could be uh, success in business there's a variety of areas of our life where we could have disharmony so i want you to consider that and learn to apply this wisdom to be able to discern and discern is the correct word here because you want to be able to say what thought caused me to speak this out? What belief am I holding on to that caused me to have that thought? Most of us don't go back that far. So let's uh, play in that field for a minute. What belief caused me to have the thought of insufficiency with my finances and my flourishing in my life? What belief caused me to have this uh, concerns about relationship, da 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 da, da? okay? And when we challenge that belief, when we say, you know what, that belief is no longer serving me. It's creating resistance. It's creating um, imbalanced emotions that I'm not enjoying. It's creating a series of thoughts that are not creating the end results that I'm wanting. So I need to change my belief. Now, changing your belief is also an inside job. It requires you to disassemble why you got that belief in the first place. If, for example, you're fearful of a relationship of, of love leaving you or never finding your love, then you then that's a belief that you have obtained somewhere. You have to go in and disassemble it. Where did that arrive from? Maybe you had an abandonment experience as a child, and so you've held on to that fear of abandonment. Uh, maybe uh, if it's a money-based issue, you grew up in an environment where there was just not a lot of flourishing, and so you've adopted the belief that that's normal. So you need to challenge these beliefs in order to shift those. And upon shifting those, you can then shift your predominant thoughts. Because it is your predominant thoughts that impact your emotions. 
Your beliefs are the engine. Your thoughts bring forward the, the, the manifestation of that engine. Your emotions as a result of your thoughts. Okay. So if your thoughts are positive, your emotions are positive. And your emotions are what are the gas pedal of what you're bringing forth into your physical world. So if those emotions are negative emotions, fear-based emotions, doubt or worry-based emotions, then you're going to then you're going to obviously bring forth a physical representation of that more and more in your life. And obviously most of us don't want that, but we get caught up in how do we change that? So disharmony is something that, as I said earlier, a lot of us have a variation of it at some point in our life, in some aspect of our life. By being conscious of our thoughts, we can question what belief caused that. And then we can start disassembling that belief. That's my challenge to you. Now I'm going to take a moment here and pull up a source calligraphy. Now, Dr. Master Shah wants to make it as easy as possible for us to have access to transformative uh, frequency and vibration. And one of the base foundations of his wisdom and teaching is when you heal things at the level of your vibration, the level of your soul, then everything uh, that is exterior from that has to transform. Well, our soul is first. We are a physical being uh, having, and we're our soul having a physical experience, excuse me. And so um, our soul carries every thought, positive and negative, every word and every action has created either a positive or negative entanglement with all those around us, creating either harmony or disharmony, love or a lack thereof, uh, forgiveness or a lack thereof, and so forth. So how can we change that? Obviously, we want to transform that root cause, or in this case, that root belief. Uh, towards that end, Dr. Master Shah has brought to us what's called Tao calligraphy. And I'm sharing this with those of you that might be uh, completely new and not familiar with this. Tao calligraphy is another word that is, means source art. And so when uh, Master Shah connects to the source, he receives a huge frequencies of love and light that come through him, through the brush, through the ink, and onto the paper. And it rests there. It sits there like a portal of light waiting for you and I to interact with it. And so whether you're listening on podcast or watching on a video, uh, this light, this frequency that only comes to you when you interact with it, it's just sitting there waiting. And so it's a, it's a very unique tool and technique to assist you and I to transform these negative beliefs because sometimes we can find that negative belief that led to that thought, that led to that unpleasant emotion, that led to the inharmonious environment we are experiencing. However, even though we can identify it, we may have difficulty uh, breaking down that old belief. It might have very deep roots. And that's where these Tao calligraphies come in. They have great empowerment. They have great ability to bring about um, love and peace and harmony into our life. How do they do that? When we interact with it, the frequency and vibration that is held within comes to us and it addresses our area of request. So in this case, this is where we employ the four power technique. So for those listening, I invite you to uh, follow through the same as I'm doing with those that are live with me here and uh, follow this pattern of the four power technique. And of course, if you're listening, and you're driving, don't do this, but you would place your hands like in a prayer position or for those that are familiar with the soul light hand position, you can do that. And you close your eyes and connect and you would connect to the source. Dear my source, my creator. And dear the healing frequency and vibration within this da he she, the greatest harmony, source calligraphy. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to receive your healing frequency and vibration. Could you please come to me and help me harmonize my imbalances, especially my original beliefs that had led to inharmonious thoughts, words, and actions about this particular area. So think about that one area that is the most disharmonious in your life and ask, dear the soul of this calligraphy, all of the love and light within, 
Please bring balance to this disharmony. Help me to transform the negative belief that I have held that has contributed to the negative thought, the negative words, the negative actions that now bring forth this disharmony in my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So now as we trace this, and I will go ahead and share this, now as we trace this image, uh, you can start to feel this transformation. So, da he she. Again, for those that are uh, listening on podcast, I will uh, trace for you. So, as I trace, I ask all the love and light to bless all those on podcast, all those live, to help them transform any negativity they might be experiencing in their life. Thank you. Let us begin. Da he she. Now, for those that are new, how do you do this? You touch all five fingers together. And then you simply follow the lines of this calligraphy. And it's a slow pace. You know, you don't have to go fast. It's it's a methodical slow pace. And you're paying attention to the yin and the yang of the dark and the light in the source calligraphy. And it's it's not so much that you're paying attention to it for the sake of paying attention. It's allowing you to be fully present and just breathe in and out and see light coming to the source of disharmony. If it's a negative belief you've identified, then see light coming into your heart center, transforming that negative belief. See golden light surrounding it. See golden light surrounding the end result of that disharmony in your life. And that's what is occurring at the spiritual level, at the soul level, as we work with this Tao source healing calligraphy. And then we will also chant, which is sound power, one of the four powers. So right now the tracing is the body power. We've invited in all the beings of love and light. That's the soul power. We've identified to see golden light coming to your area of request. That's the mind power. So that's three of the four powers. And the fourth one is the sound power, mantra or chanting. So we're going to chant da he she greatest harmony to help bring about healing and transformation to our request. <clears throat> Let us begin. Da he she Da he she Da he she Da he she Da she da she da she da she greatest harmony greatest harmony Greatest harmony, greatest harmony, greatest harmony, greatest harmony, greatest harmony. Greatest harmony. Da he she. Da he she. Da he she. Da he she. Greatest harmony, greatest harmony, greatest harmony, greatest harmony. Da he she, the greatest harmony, source love and light. Thank you for blessing healing, transforming 
any beliefs that I am holding on to that have led to disharmony in my life, especially for my area of request. So grateful for this transformation of this belief. I know it has served me to show me what I do not want. It has given me the opportunity to be clear on what I do want. And now I ask your assistance to adjust my beliefs to reflect what I do want, to re adjust my beliefs so that I can easily have thoughts, offer words and actions that are in alignment with what I want, what I deserve. I'm so grateful for these frequencies, blessings, love and light that you are offering to my field, my vibration, to my soul that will allow me to effortlessly shift my beliefs to one that is much more loving and supportive of what I am wanting. Thank you. Dahushe, 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 Greatest Harmony. Greatest harmony, greatest harmony, greatest harmony. Continue to chant, continue to receive the light. Dahushe, greatest harmony. Dahushe, greatest harmony. And dear the soul of the source, healing, love, and light of Dahushe, the greatest harmony. Could you please bless and transform my beliefs? I want you to think now of what belief are you holding on to? The one thing that's most disharmonious, relationship, money, health. What is the belief around it? If it's health, oh, I'm just, just old age. That's not a true belief. That's one that you've accepted as true. But if it's relationship, I'm not good enough or... It's all their fault, or whatever it is that's creating disharmony in your environment. If it's about money, why I try, I can never get ahead. No matter what I do, it doesn't work. These are all things that you've accepted as true, but they are not. So identify that. Give yourself the opportunity to transform it. Da -hu -she -he. Dahushe, 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 Greatest Harmony, Greatest Harmony. Greatest harmony, greatest harmony, <clears throat> greatest harmony, greatest harmony, 
greatest harmony greatest harmony dahu she dahu she dahu she da she greatest harmony greatest harmony greatest harmony greatest harmony so come to the end of tracing this source calligraphy and check in with yourself. Does that imbalanced emotion feel more harmonious? Do you feel more in alignment with your original self? Do you feel less busy thoughts? Harmony is very, very important. When we can harmonize our heart and our mind, we can move mountains. Our mind tends to be the boss, the illegitimate boss. And that's because we have given it that power and authority. That is why the wisdom is to harmonize from the inside out. Identify the thought which is bouncing around in your mind. It has an origination point, which is the belief. And look to that belief to transform it. Identify that belief. Identify how it was formed. What happened and when did it happen that caused you to have that belief? And then disassemble it by finding any and all things that can prove it untrue. It might only be true for you and your family environment, but there are many other families that, that may have lived in an exact same set of conditions, and it's not true for them. It may have been true for you in the environment in your relationship, but there are many other people in relationships and it's not true for them. These are ways in which you can consciously convince yourself, you know what, I've held on to this belief, but it doesn't mean it's true. In fact, I have proof after proof after proof after proof for all these other people. It's certainly not been an issue for them. I don't think they're any more special. So it must be that this belief is and then you can let go of that belief and set a new one. Make that your foundation. And with the foundation of that new belief, you can create significant more harmony in your thoughts. As you create more harmony in your thoughts, your words create more harmony. This collectively disentangles the various entanglements you have that have shown up in the form of physical world in harmonious conditions in your health, in your relationships, in your finances. This is the sixth of the 10 Da's. <clears throat> and as you work with it, I encourage you to become more familiar with your own thoughts. And don't just accept them uh, as fine if it's not serving you. Be vigilant and say, no, that is not serving me. And, or, or in fact, they are serving you. They're serving you to find what it is you do want. So reallocate them and say, no, I no longer accept to buy into this thought and choose instead to realign it with something that does work for you. Acknowledge its service. Say, thank you. Don't push it away. Offer it love and light because that's what is needed to help it to to complete its service to you because its service is just showing you what is it that you want you want me or do you want something else this is how we can create more harmony in our internal self which then brings harmony to our external world okay so i hope you enjoyed today's session and then next week we will be doing the seventh of the ten das which is da chang shum which is the greatest flourishing, seems to be everybody's favorite. Wonder why that is. So I look forward to seeing you then. Until then, have an 
awesome day, everybody. Bye-bye.